Okay, so the the essay I'm going to be talking about today is by C.S. Lewis, uh, eminent eminent uh, author of both fiction and nonfiction. I'm sure many of you have heard of the Chronicles of Narnia. So this is just a really, uh, whether you agree with it or not, he's a, a very uh, highly esteemed uh, literary figure. And uh, one of the things he wrote about, and he wrote about a lot of things, including Christianity, because eventually he became a kind of defender of Christianity. But in any event, he wrote about a lot of things. One of the things he wrote about was a defense of the, the theory of retribution, retributivism, retributivism uh, when it comes to uh, criminal punishment. Now, in the last lecture, in the last lecture, I explained briefly what the theory of retribution is because you really needed to uh, need to know that to understand uh, fully understand Carl Menninger's view of, of, of the criminal justice system and what what kinds of reformation we need and how we need to reform it and how we need to reform criminals and I told you that in the last in the last lecture that an essential part of Carl Menninger's point of view when it comes to punishment is his rejection of the theory of retribution. And so again, briefly, we can say that according to the retributive theory of retribution, criminals should be punished because and to the extent that they deserve it. Okay, Because and to the extent that they deserve it. And the, and the retributive says uh, that criminals for the most part, and there may be some exceptions, Someone could be temporarily insane, or someone could have various uh, brain dysfunctions, and and that uh, such that the, it, those things could impair uh, that person's uh, ability to uh, discern right from wrong. But for the most part, retributives say that people uh, are responsible for their actions, and that they they maybe should have known better, and they certainly should have acted better and it is legitimate to hold people accountable normally normally, for their choices and that, uh, that when someone chooses to commit a crime the person is trying to derive an unjust benefit. Most people are following the law but the criminals are trying to uh, get a benefit to which they're not entitled by uh, breaking laws that most people follow. Okay. And so the idea is that when uh, criminals break the law, and that normally they do this freely, that when they do that, they have, um, in a sense, uh, committed an injustice. Right? They've tried to derive an, uh, a benefit to which they're not entitled. And they have incurred a debt to society. So that the criminals need uh, to be punished, in a sense. In a sense, they were asking for it. It's funny, sometimes you can go to YouTube, let's say, and you can look up uh, bullies get their, you know, get what they deserve, right? And a lot of people like seeing stuff like that. Well, that's how uh, the retributive views most uh, criminals, as in a sense getting what they deserve. Now, I mean, this is a tricky question because sometimes people, uh, and, and of course, Lewis real, uh, realized that people can have prejudices people can have prejudice against whole groups of people or certain kinds of behavior that may even be socially harmless but it's scary to people uh, whether it's uh, unconventional sex or whether it's uh, I mean they could uh, drug use whether it used to be that marijuana uh, possession of marijuana uh, so think of like Texas in Texas could get someone especially large quantities of it could get somebody a very long prison sentence right so uh, C.S. Lewis understood that people are imperfect and that if we go by the judgment of the people, sometimes people will uh, be really harsh uh, in behavior that, that it seems to have just not very serious consequences. He understood that. But he thought in general it's better off to have a democratic system in which the laws reflect the majority's will. And you can reform them to the extent that the laws are unjust. And, and of course we saw that in America, right? We saw that with the, the uh, Jim Crow laws and we saw very important figures such as Martin Luther King Jr. say, yeah, that's the law, but there's still, it doesn't mean it's right. Okay, so we understand 
we understand that the law is an imperfect instrument. Okay, but here's the point. Lewis believed that however the imperfect the law is, and he's not saying we shouldn't ever change it, however imperfect it is, that it, it's in general a good idea to have it broadly reflect uh, the majority's point of view, at least in most circumstances, and that what we shouldn't do is just hand over the execution of the law to people such as psychiatrists, okay, and then just say, well, let them decide what happens to criminals. He didn't think that was a good idea. He thought that, uh, that uh, to the extent that, uh, let's say, armed robbery uh, carries a you know, certain range of, of penalties, let's say, uh, within state's law, he thought that should reflect, in general, the average person's point of view. Okay? And he thought that, that however imperfect that was, that would be better than just having uh, people such as psychiatrists determine what happens to criminals. Okay. But anyway, so C. S. Okay. So C. S. Lewis was a defender of the theory of retribution. Now here's what's interesting. Lewis says, "I'm defending the theory of retribution, not so much for the ordinary law-abiding citizen, as for criminals themselves." He goes, "I think that the theory of retribution is the only theory." that directly handles uh, the idea of justice. He says, he says, punishment is the sort of thing that can be just or unjust, or more just or, or less just. And he says, that's part of its nature. And then he asks, he goes, let me ask you this, or actually he asserted this, he goes, how can punishment be unjust? Well, he goes, it's going to be unjust to the extent that it is undeserved. Okay? So for example, if you punish an innocent person, that's clearly unjust. If someone commits a horrible crime and then gets off, let's say, be, okay, now there are reasons for getting them off, even on a technicality, perhaps, but if the, if the person is, is guilty, factually guilty, and committed a horrible crime but gets off, uh, many people would say, well, that's a form of injustice, too. There may, it may be impossible to redress it. Um, because there were violations of procedures and say collecting evidence but the fact that is that's a kind of injustice people would say if there's someone who's uh, obviously guilty g uh, gets off factually guilty of a, a horrible crime gets off and it's just, and it's also really really bad when someone who is completely innocent is convicted of a serious crime and spends and either gets put to death or even spends many, many years in jail while being in prison while being an innocent person. Okay, we understand that. Okay, so what, what Lewis is saying is that if you think about retributism, because it emphasizes what is deserved in a way that is not at all emphasized by what he calls the, uh, he, ca he doesn't call it the therapeutic theory, he calls it the humanitarian theory, but it's pretty much the same thing. He says that it is a, it's the only theory that really deals with just punishment or justice when it comes to criminal justice. He says, uh, this is Lewis now, Lewis says we don't talk about a cure as being uh, just or unjust. We just talk about how effective it is or ineffective. And similarly, we don't talk about a preventive as being just or unjust. We just talk about how effective it is or ineffective. And he says, it is a part of the essential nature of punishment that it's the sort of thing that can be just or unjust. And that the primary way in which we can determine whether punishment is, is just or unjust is to determine whether it is deserved, however imperfectly we determine that. Okay? Now, obviously, if somebody's not guilty but spends a long time in prison, is convicted and spends a long time, that's, a, that's an injustice, right? A serious injustice. But anyway, so according to Lewis, if we're going to really be concerned about the individual and individual and how that person is treated, and whether that person is treated justly when it comes to punishment, we need to be concerned with that which is deserved, who deserves what. And we determine that imperfectly by the nature of the crime and presumably the person's mental state to the degree that we can determine that. And I'm not going to go into a long dissertation on criminal justice and, and philosophy of the law, but uh, you guys understand that crimes can uh, be of various levels. 
You can, there can be negligent homicide. There can be murder one, uh, killing with malice of forethought. And you guys understand that a person's mental state, more often than not, I mean, typically, is relevant to the nature and seriousness of a crime, right? If someone intentionally and maliciously causes harm, normally, other things being equal, that's a more serious crime than if someone negligently causes harm. Although, uh, negligently ca causing very serious harm can be serious, but if someone uh, maliciously and intentionally causes uh, the same kind of harm, same degree of harm, that can be an even more serious uh, crime. So again, the idea of recrutivism uh, is the idea that most people, most of the time, are responsible and accountable for their actions, and that what we need to do is determine how serious the crime was, and to the degree that we're able, the person's mental state when he or she committed the crime. Okay, so Lewis is saying that if we're really concerned about justice, and if we're really concerned about individual rights, then we really have to be concerned about just punishment. And if we're concerned about just punishment, we need to be concerned about what is deserved punishment. So again, Lewis's perspective as a recruitist is that we should punish people because and to the extent that they deserve it. Now you might ask yourself this, did Lewis think that reformation is unimportant? Didn't he want to, uh, criminals to be reformed? Didn't he want to deter crime? And the answer is yes, he did. He thought, he goes, he says whether the, the punishment is deserved, he says, is not the only important or valuable question to ask of a punishment. But he says it is an essential question to ask. And it is a, a question that we can never afford not to ask because it's going to be uh, the key question, to de an essential question, to determine whether some punishment is just or not. So if you ask, hey, uh, C.S. Lewis, are you in favor of reformation? He said, of course he would say yes. Are you in favor of deterring crime? He would say to the degree that we can do so justly. But his position was we should never replace, we should never replace the goal of giving criminals what they deserve with a focus on reformation and to some degree deterrence. We should not do that. Because he says to the degree that we do that, we are opening up a system that can treat people very clearly unjustly and treat people only as objects of social and psychiatric manipulation. Because once you say uh, of a uh, person who's been convicted of a crime, how can I control this person and, 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 and even perhaps manipulate this person to such an extent and in such a way that I can make it less likely the person's going to be a repeat offender, especially when the person is released. Once we do that, and we don't ask what is the just treatment of the person, what does the person deserve based on the person's previous choices, Lewis says you could end up with a situation in which uh, people may not even be uh, guilty, uh, really guilty, of having committed crimes, but they're widely thought to be guilty. And so by giving that person a severe punishment and making that quite public, you could deter other people, but it would clearly be a, uh, an unjust treatment of that individual. Furthermore, you could have a situation, in Lewis says, in which you could have very severe punishment for, uh, let's say, a repeat offender of a fairly trivial crime. Or let's suppose somebody is a nonviolent offender, but the person often commits thefts of, of things of small value. But the person it does this very regularly and keeps on getting caught, right? Well, theoretically, that person could spend longer in prison and under psychiatric uh, detention than someone who might have killed someone if it's thought that the person who killed someone, and I'm not talking about self-defense, and the person who killed someone um, is thought by some panel of psychiatrists to have been, quote, cured, end quote. Okay, so you could have a situation in which a person who is guilty of these uh, regular uh, thefts of small valuables and does so without violence or the threat of violence, that person could be in prison longer than someone who 
has committed homicide, but who is thought uh, to be less likely to recommit. But anyway, the, the point is, according to, according to Lewis, justice requires giving criminals what they deserve, but that's precisely a consideration and a question that won't be addressed within the context of what he calls the humanitarian theory, which is also called the therapeutic theory. Okay? Remember, the humanitarian theory or the therapeutic theory, same thing, says that most habitual crime, uh, most habitual criminals, okay, uh, most habitual criminals are in need of uh, psychiatric and psychological intervention because they have psychiatric slash, uh, slash uh, psychological problems and th we have to devise means of changing them and ideally also uh, get treating them in such a way that we make it less likely that other people will commit crime so we can deter crime as well. But the, em the central emphasis of the therapeutic view or the humanitarian view, same thing, is on reformation. Okay, But it's not on giving people what they deserve in the sense of the retributivist uh, position. Okay, so according to according to Lewis, the humanitarian slash therapeutic theory is actually, he says, a very dangerous view, a very dangerous view, because what happens is even people who may have good will and good intentions, if they try to implement it, including psychiatrists who may have good intentions, that it it gives. Uh, psychiatrists way too much power over individuals accused uh, and convicted of crime and it doesn't address at all what people deserve on the basis of their choices and so he says that you could also have a situation very easily he says in which uh, convicted criminals pretend to have been cured they pretend to uh, renounce what they've done and pretend to uh, have uh, been reformed and then they could easily recommit uh, crimes. And so according to, uh, according to Lewis, the humanitarian theory uh, gives way too much power to the hands of the state and state-sponsored psychiatrists. It ignores uh, the idea that people normally should be held accountable for what they do and that there should be certain kinds of limits to how we treat people based on their choices. And remember, the Trivish theory says the, that, the, among other things, that you punish only the guilty, you punish them because they're guilty, and you punish them in accordance with the nature and seriousness of their crime. So the idea is that, uh, obviously, the more serious the crime, the more serious the punishment. And uh, it, that's, that's a central notion, right? The punishment should fit the crime. And these, these all follow from the idea that people for the most part are responsible for their choices and that in a sense by committing crimes they're asking for all the consequences including the legal consequences. They're getting what they deserve. So it relates to, uh, you've heard this idea of obviously that people uh, reap what they sow. Uh, that's the right, The you've heard of that, right? People reap what they sow that if they uh, and there's a sense, you've, and this relates to what they call the law of reciprocity. Right? So people treat others badly. It, it, think of it this way: think of a bully who's constantly picking on people, and then eventually some kid who's being picked on beats the tar out of the bully. And sometimes you'll see these on YouTube, and people say the bully got what was coming to him. There's a sense in which the bully was asking for it. So that, that's the idea of retributivism. And again, retributivism doesn't necessarily reject the importance of reformation and deterrence. But what it says is that the goals of reformation and deterrence should never be, be substitutes for. They should never displace the goal of doing justice and giving people just punishment. And the idea of just punishment requires giving people what they deserve. And it was the position of, uh, of Lewis that it, even if someone has the best of intentions, the person could end up mistreating people in the name of helping them. Okay? Now, I don't know how many people saw A Clockwork Orange, but in Clockwork Orange, 
there were some violent criminals who were subjected to uh, control uh, by scientists. And by the end of the movie, not only did people not respect the criminals, but ver very often they didn't respect the scientists either be, uh, because of their harsh treatment, of the but harsh treatment, but in the way of manipulating the criminals, manipulating the criminals and trying to condition their minds. And again, I think that, um, that, that those were concerns of uh, C.S. Lewis. He says that, that when someone, in fact, he said that uh, people who uh, believe that, you know, that they're very righteous and that, and that they can do what they want in the name of helping people, he says they can actually do uh, often more harm than people who are, are, are very highly self-interested and don't say they want to help people. He says that sometimes people, uh, in the name of paternalism, in the name of helping people, people can end up really mistreating people. And he says, and they can do it with the approval of their own consciences. Right? So, uh, so again, uh, I, I can't overemphasize this point. Lewis believed that the theory of the therapeutic theory slash humanitarian theory was a highly manipulative theory that had a very na naive view of human nature, had a very naive view of the idea that you can give uh, the state more and more power and that the state doesn't have to have clear limits set on it uh, to, in the way that it handles people, including criminals. And so again, I get back to this idea that, that according to um, C.S. Lewis, the criminal law should very roughly reflect the average person's uh, moral conviction. And again, that doesn't mean criminal law shouldn't ever be changed, but it should in that the average person should have a lot to say uh, when it comes to what the law is. And he thought it was a very bad mistake to encourage a, a system to try to create a system, to try to further a system in which psych psychiatric judgment would largely displace the judgment of the average juror and then the judgment of the community uh, at large on the moral seriousness of various crimes. But anyway, so uh, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking that if you understand what I said about retributism, if you understand Lewis's idea that retributism deals directly with the question of just punishment, and that according to Lewis, the theory of retro, of, I should say the theory, the humanitarian theory slash therapeutic theory, does not directly deal with the idea of just punishment. It just assumes that, okay, in general, if somebody's been convicted, uh, then, okay, then that person uh, needs to be treated in a certain way uh, so that that person will be less likely to uh, recidivate, to commit uh, a repeat offense or commit other crimes. Uh, and according to Lewis, the first question when we need to ask of any punishment is whether it is just. Okay? And, and he says, and right after you ask that, you have to ask the question, to what degree is it deserved? And again, Lewis's position is the humanitarian slash therapeutic theory does not ask those questions. And so therefore, it represents arbitrary power and it tends to uh, reduce uh, people, and especially uh, criminals convicted of crime, to objects of social and psychiatric manipulation. And that's pretty much uh, what I wanted to say about C.S. Lewis and his criticism of what he calls the humanitarian theory, which is what Menninger was defending as the therapeutic theory. Thank you.